All right, so every member of the congregation is to warmly rise as the procession comes in. Thank you. As we welcome upstage Professor Oladili. Shall we rise as we pray? Our Lord and our God, eternal King of glory, the author of life and wisdom, the Father from whom all blessings flow. Thank you for this day that you've made. Thank you because in it we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We bless you for everyone here, especially our guests who traveled from the four corners of the world. Thank you for the inaugural lecturer. Thank you for enriching her. Thank you because you will give her unction and she will speak as your oracle and unto you for the enrichment of all of us listeners. Thank you for this university. Thank you for the leadership and the followership. Be glorified, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, take preeminence today and let your name and your name alone be glorified in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Once again, you are welcome, but I will request all of us to please stand up as we take the national anthem and the university anthem.
Let's be seated. Mr. Chairman, sir, I'd like to invite the chairman of today's program, Professor J. Ayuade, for the opening remarks. It is my pleasure to welcome you all to the sixth inaugural lecture of Bowen University. The lecture will be given by no other person than Professor Foluke Abimbola Adiremi of the, of the College of Agriculture, Engineering, and Sciences. We are grateful that you are here with us today because this is an important event in the life of any university. Uh, an inaugural lecture is an occasion for people, for professors, to state what they have been doing and what they intend to do because it is inaugural, it is something that is supposed to be at the beginning. And uh, anybody who gives an inaugural lecture is just beginning a career as professor. And so it is important that you are present here today so that you can be at the beginning of the beginning of Professor Adiremi's professorial career. And I wish you very good listening and uh, I hope that as you go, uh, you get enough to take home uh, from this lecture. Once again, you're welcome for being here. Thank you. I have the privilege of inviting Dr. Adeneke on Nashaga Molake for the citation of the inaugural lecture, Dr. Molake. The chairman, sir, principal staff present, ladies and gentlemen, I have the privilege of reading the citation of Professor Foluke Abimbola Adiremi. Professor Foluke Abimbola Adiremi was born on the 15th day of July 1964 into the family of Adeleke and Madame Abigail Bola Joku Abolaniwa of Akpate Compound. He said, do, he la orogun. She attended Yejide Girls Grammar School, Molete Ibadum, from 1977, and there developed keen interest in agricultural science and found herself in the first set of an all-girls school to take examination in the course at the school certificate level. Fortuitously, her elder brother, and role model studied agriculture, and that aroused her interest in the field. In 1986, she had a distinction in the National Certificate of Education at the Oyo State College of Education, Ilaorogo, now Oshun State College of Education, and a Bachelor of Science Education, second class upper division in agricultural science of Bendel State University, Abraka, in 1990. She obtained MSc and PhD of the University of Ibadan in Animal Science in 1994 and 2001, respectively. While on her PhD, she was a teaching assistant. She joined the services of Bowen University as a pioneer staff in the erstwhile Faculty of Agriculture in 2002 and has served on several committees in the university. She was a subdean of student affairs, head of department of animal science and fisheries management, dean, faculty of agriculture, 
She is a congregation representative on the Bowen University Governing Council. In 2011, she won the prestigious postdoctoral fellowship of African women in agricultural research and development. She also won a travel grant by Bill and Belinda, Melinda Gates Foundation for Animal Science. In 2012, she won another travel grant by Claude Danforth Plant Science Center for the Global Cassava Conference at Kampala, Uganda. She has over 50 local and international publications to her credit. <laughs> Professor Foluka Abimbola Adiremi is a fellow of International Professional Managers Association, IPMA United Kingdom, and a member of the following professional associations. World Poultry Science Africa Branch, International Society for Tropical Root Crops African Branch, Animal Science Association of Nigeria, Nigerian Society for Experimental Biology, Nigerian Society of Animal Production, Third World Organization for Women in Science, All African Society of Animal Agriculture, Association of Applied Biologists, American Society of Animal Science, and Nigerian Women in Agricultural Research and Development. <laughs> Professor Aderemi is happily married to Prince Bawafade Aderemi, an Ibadan-based legal practitioner. The union is blessed with Prince Tewagbade Aderemi, Dr. Adenehun Ogunsuji, Ni Aderemi, and Prince Adepoju Aderemi, and a granddaughter, Oluwatami Lore, Adebosola Ubusuji. Mr. Chairman, sir, Persistent Staff Officers present, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I present to you our inaugural lecturer of the day, Professor Foluke Abimbola Aderemi. <laughs> The Vice Chancellor in absentia, the Registrar, the Bursar, the Liberian, the Chaplain, all the Principal Officers here present, College Provost, Deputy Provost, Directors, Distinguished Professors, Program Coordinators, Scholars, Staff, and Students of Bowen University. Gentlemen of the press, my lost spiritual and temporal, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I count it a great privilege to stand before distinguished audience as this, to make this presentation titled Sustainability of animal protein production means to promote food security. Being the sixth inaugural lecture in this citadel of God, we are excellence and godliness is our watchword. To the giver, keeper, and sustainer of life, be ascribed glory, honor, and adoration for his mercy and grace manifest in the life of every one of us witnessing this day. Against my banking dream, I found myself a teaching assistant position in University of Ibadan. 
1997. After I obtained my PhD in 2001, God steered up the Baptist Convention to actualize a long-awaited dream of Baptist University, whose conception dated back to more than three decades ago. I became one of the pioneer staff in the Elsewhere Faculty of Agriculture in September 2002. Permit me to put on record that I attended Yejide Girls Grammar School, Molete Ibado. And being a girls' school, my set was the first to offer agricultural science as a subject. I was born into an agrarian family, my father being a farmer. My love for agriculture, however, grew when my elder brother, who happened to be my role model and mentor, studied agriculture in the university. Although along the line, some of my tutors looking at my complexion had thought I should have gone into other fields like secretarial studies and the likes, even my brother and my mother were persuading me to go on for nothing, but I never yielded to their counsel. Little wonder he ended up marrying an admirable nurse, the love of his life. They are here seated. The more they tried to discourage me, the more I became more interested in agriculture. And today, the dream is not a mirage, but a reality to the glory of God. This is the order of my presentation. We'll go from the origin of animal science, the meaning of animal science, significance of animal science in human development, why animal protein, the present situation, what can be done, sustainability, the way out, then my research contribution, and finally, the closing words. Origin of animal science. Animal science as a field dated back to the ancient time in the book of Genesis 4, verse 2. And she again bear his brother, Abel. Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Animal science, is what is also referred to as animal agriculture. This is the application of many biological sciences, behavioral, physical, and agricultural engineering to produce food and companion animals that meet man's nutritional, social, companionship, and to some extent, labor requirements. Animals generally play significant role in development of man. This includes source of manure to improve soil fertility. When they are sold, you generate fund. Jobs are created through productive engagement in animal production. It serves as security or guard to human lives. Live animals and their products can be exported to earn foreign exchange. They are used for research purposes. They serve as source of power to till the land, means of transportation, serve as raw material in some industries, for instance, milk for dairy products, provision of food for man, thus animal production plays a significant role in food security of a nation. What then do we mean by food security? Food security is defined as having enough food in quantity and quality, and all categories of people having access to this food. It is defined by a committee or United Nations on World Food to mean that at all times, people have physical, social, and economic access to sufficient, safe, and nutritious food that meet their food preferences and dietary needs for an active and healthy life. Briefly, we want to look at the component of food security. And these are availability, accessibility, utilization, and stability. This shows the 
In, there is interrelationship between animal production, the processing and marketing distribution, as well as consumption. This will promote environmental health, social equity, and human health with economic vitality. You will agree with me that a well-fed human will be physically, mentally, and emotionally stable and sound to carry out activities that will lead to economic vitality. And of course, this automatically promotes the healthy environment. What are the food that are produced by man? Animal foods. Foods produced through animals include poultry, chicken, turkey, duck, guinea fowl, Japanese quail, pork from swine, beef from cattle, sheep, mutton from sheep, goat meat from goat, fish, eggs, milk, and snails and fishes. Since all these animal products are meant to meet the needs of man, then it is just right to consider the population of man that we are producing for. The Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO 2017, the IFPLRI 2017, and the World Food Program, WFP 2017, they have reported that the largest proportion of the population of Sub-Sahara Africa are highly undernourished. The Global Index scores for hunger for 2017 in Sub-Sahara Africa and South Asia ranges between 29.4 and 30.9, respectively. This is a serious hunger situation, implying about three out of 10 people experience serious hunger in sub-Sahara Africa. Nigeria has implemented macroeconomics policy as well as sectoral and institutional reform aimed at ensuring high and sustainable poverty reduction, food security, and economic growth. It is noteworthy that some of these initi initiatives by government were ineffective in addressing the problem. Some of these initiatives date back to the days of widespread implementation of economic reform programs aimed at enhancing prudent management of national resources that will facilitate economic growth. The magnitude the magnitude of poverty in developing countries had contributed immensely to food insecurity in the nation. Nigeria with 36 states and is the most populous country in Africa with a population of about 170 million as of 2012, according to population 2012. With over 70% of population living on less than a dollar per day, that is less than, if we call it 450, 450 naira per day. By the year 2050, it is projected, however, that the population will be 402 million, making Nigeria the fourth most populous country on earth, after India, China, and United States. With the fast growing population, with the fast growing population, Nigeria is threatened with the problem of food insecurity and poverty, which can be addressed with a more developed animal production sector, in addition to other sectors. Recent research emphasizes the role of livestock as part of sustainable diets and as a contributor to food security. Animal protein production should be regarded as a gold mine an engine for economic empowerment and poverty alleviation in Nigeria. The demand for food from animal agriculture is anticipated to nearly double by 2050. Increased demand is due in part to an, a predicted increase in the world population from 7.2 billion to between 9 and 10 billion in 2050, according to United Nations 2013. The increase in population puts additional pressure on the availability of land, water, and energy needed for animal and crop agriculture. 
animals are important sources of food, particularly of high-quality protein, minerals, vitamins, and micronutrients. The value of dietary animal protein is in excess of its proportion in diet because it contains essential amino acids that are deficient in plant sources. Animal protein are more digestible and metabolized more efficiently than plant protein. Animal-derived protein are known as complete and high-quality protein. Meat makes up about 18% of global calories and about 25% of global protein consumption, and it provides essential micronutrients. Let me place it on record that your body cannot store excess protein. And so it's important to just get enough from your diet each day. Proteins and amino acids are used for almost every metabolic process in the body. For example, some, some key proteins, they are involved in things like glycolysis and the like. These amino acids, which is the final product after protein is broken down, they are either essential or non-essential. Your body can produce the non-essential amino acid, but your body cannot produce the essential amino acid. And that is why you need to obtain it through diet. For optimal health, your body needs all the essential amino acid in the right ratio. And these are considered to be complete sources of protein. The question then arises, how then can we have a Nigeria with abundance of protein? of animal protein in particular. We are visualizing. Can I have where? Yeah, Africa with abundance of protein. This is the pictorial picture. I mean, the pictorial view of what is in mind when you are talking of animal. I mean, Nigeria with abundance of protein. Nigeria, where we have all this in abundance, the milk, egg, meat of all type. Before we can have Nigeria with abundance of protein, we need to start from our microenvironment. And in this instance, we are talking of ocean states. And so, as Nigeria struggles to advance in animal protein production, many factors are militating against its, its activities in the nation. And this includes factors like inadequate finance, high cost of animal feeds, animal diseases, lack of infrastructure, lack of government incentives, transportation, and other factors are militating against animal production. However, solving these problems will promote the animal protein production. The way out of all this limitation is sustainability. Sustainability. That is the way out of this. And what do we mean by sustainability? By definition, sustainability is forward-looking and addresses intergenerational and longer time scale in research and planning that operate at the ecosystem level, whereby imbalances are avoided. Sustainability is defined by NRC as having the following agreed upon goals consistent with the visions. Satisfy human food, feed, and fiber needs and contribute to biofuel needs. Enhances environmental quality and the resource base. Sustain the economic viability of agriculture enhances the quality of life for farmers, farm workers, and society as a whole. Sustainability. According to Tewe 1997, he made the submission that sustainability includes increasingly expanded economic and social criteria, which connotes a development process that is equitable, responsive to felt needs of people, and generates development benefits on a continual replaceable basis. Agriculture must be internally and externally sustainable and also serve as a resource that is available to support other sectors of the economy and society, as noted by Davis in 2002. 
what then are my own contribution? The saying, the science of food is the science of life. And it is also said that good food only opens doors to wealth and longevity. This very significant assertion has caught the trust of my research, adding value to so-called waste and annexing such into livestock production. My research contribution into animal production started when I discovered through literature that going into animal production, 75 to 80 percent of the capital required goes into feeding. A major problem of poultry farmers is usually the high cost of feeds, and maize constitutes a major feed ingredient. So animal scientists from time immemorial have been making a systemic effort on how to solve this problem. I joined the solution seeker by looking for what can replace or reduce the conventional ingredients in livestock feeds. The nutritive value of alternative feed resources have been documented. This includes palm kernel cake, cotton seed, cassava flour, cassava root civet, tubers, and leaves. Sweet, sweet potatoes, tubers, and vines, Adore Emi 2001, Adore Emi 2006A, Adore Emi and Alabi 2013, Lado Kun 2011. Adding value to waste and annexing such into livestock production helps in the Nigeria, in sustaining Nigeria livestock sector. I looked at what is in abundance in our environment, and cassava is one of the crop that is produced in abundance. So let's look at what can be done to cassava so that we can replace some of these conventional feed ingredients. But being that as it may, there are some limiting factors in using cassava, even as, as feed ingredients. And this include bulkiness in the fresh form, increased cost of transportation, dustiness in its dried on pelleted form, low protein content, mycotoxin content, mycotoxin content, economics of its mixture into commercial feeds, high fiber content, and the worst, short shelf life. Cassava cannot survive more than 24 hours on the shelf without processing. Inclusion. Thank you. For every problem, there is always a way out. Inclusion of cassava leaves in cassava meal will enhance the protein content. From literature, it was found out that Cassava leaves contain between 22 and 30 percent of crude protein. So if we have a way of processing it and including such into the livestock feed, then we can boost the protein content of the, of the meal. Employing traditional method in processing cassava roots. I'm sure some people will be questioning it in their mind. Oh, they're always talking about the cyanogenic glucoside inside cassava. Let me allay our fear that as soon as cassava is processed through peeling, soaking, grating, the product that will come out at the end is usually less than 100 parts per million in content of glucoside, and that is safe for consumption. We also went into use of exogenous enzyme to supplement or augment some of these cassava products. The chaff after fufu has been processed is called cassava root civiate. And so we use exogenous enzyme on it and we discover that the animals, the birds precisely that were fed with this, had better metabolizable energy, nutrient digestibility, performance hematology, and serum biochemistry of the pullet chicks were 
improved. The cassava root survey was, was incorporated at 10% to completely replace wheat bran. And the cassava root civet were either supplemented or unsupplemented with avicine and dry pure yeast. And the addition of avicine and exogenous enzymes significantly improved the metabolizable energy, hematological parameters such as the PCV, hemoglobin concentration, and the enzymes. So it was concluded that CRS, that's the cassava root civet, could effectively replace wheat bran in cassava diet with enzymic supplementation as no abnormality was observed in the blood of the experimental birds, and it was also cost effective. Biodegradation was another tool that was employed to enhance the protein content of the cassava root leaves and civets. The microbial enzyme was employed from Aspergillus niger to biodegrade the fiber components and thereby increasing the level of all the contents. This figure three shows the comparison between the biodegraded and undegraded, undegraded cassava root civets. The dry matter you can see is very similar. The non, the NFE is also very similar. In a nutshell, when you biodegrade cassava root civets, it compares very well, very well with some conventional ingredients and so we can replace it with, with it. We also employ biodegradation, and that we use cassava peels and the, and the cassava uh, root civets. And that was the diagram, the first figure that we saw there. Also, we thought of how can we make use of holistic utilization of cassava. We went ahead to look at how we can make use of the cassava roots, the cassava stem, and the cassava civets, including the peels. And we came out with this. The roots, the stems, they were harvested. They were mixed at ratio six to three to one. And then they were incorporated to replace maize at greater levels of 25, 50, 75, and 100%. Other ingredients were added to meet the minimum nutrient requirement of the board. And then the proximate composition was analyzed and all bears were fed. That's the proximate composition of maize and the old cassava meal that was developed. You can see there is a close gap between the dry matter content and all others. Though the crude protein of maize is still between 9 and 10, but the cassava product that was developed, the crude protein happens to be 7.94. Result shows that feed intake decreased as the level of WCM increased. This implies poor utilization of the WCM due to either high dietary fiber level or residual level of the cyanide. Then the performance characteristics are nutrients, digestibility of the boss and air quality characteristics are shown in table three. That is the performance characteristics and the nutrient digestibility of the broiler that were fed with, with all cassava meal and other feed ingredients. We can see the similarity between diet one, that's the maize content, the maize diet, and even diet two and three, even four. Let's move on. Performance characteristics of layers. The first one was the broiler. This one is about the egg laying box. You can see there is also similarity between those ones that were fed maize diets and those that were fed cassava diets. We went on, we looked at the egg quality characteristics or the parameters. 
and we discovered there was virtually no significant difference in the shell thickness, the yolk weight, and even the albumin weight. So we concluded the inclusion of WCM in layer diets up to 25% was found to be economical and productive as it was able to support body maintenance and egg production of the bot at a level which was comparable to those of control. In broilers, WCM can replace mace in diet up to 50% without adversely affecting the performance characteristics, organ weight, and nutrients, and nutrients digest, uh, digestibility. We also went ahead to look at, can we supplement the cassava peels with moringa leaves? That's the miracle plant. And we developed a product that was tagged CPA. And this was used to replace wheat bran at varying levels in broiler diet. The performance, the digestibility, and the blood profile of the broilers were studied. Alabi, Adere Emi and Alabi 2013. And it was discovered that the wheat bran and the CPM were at par with one another when it comes to proximate composition content. Supplementation of cassava peels, then the so-called CPM was now used to replace wheat bran, which is a conventional feed ingredient, up to 75% without adverse effects or nutrient digestibility, performance characteristics, and blood profile of broilers. We went ahead to do solid state fermentation, evaluation of biodegraded and non-degraded plantain peels. We looked around and we saw that our cafeteria generates a lot of waste, particularly the plantain peels. Can we make use of these plantain peels? And so we employ solid state fermentation. We biodegraded it and we channel it into as feed production. Adere Mi et al. 2016. That was at the starter phase. The table will show us the content at starter phase and at the finisher phase. Then we discover and we concluded by saying biodegraded and or undegraded plantain peels could replace wheat offer in the diet or broiler diet without adversely affecting the performance, the blood serum, metabolites, or even the morphological parameters of the broilers. This in turn promotes consumption of animal protein among the populace. Because people are now more conscious about what they eat. So that brought us to looking into white meats. And we went into rabbit research. The potential of rabbits to mitigate the problem of protein calorie malnutrition in humid tropics had been recognized and well documented. Most of the rabbits in Nigeria are raised mainly on green forages in the wet season of the year. However, with onset of dry season, the conventional green forages wither, lignifies, and at times may not be available due to bush burning. In addition, forages combined with concentrates at certain levels gave better performance than either forage or concentrate fed alone. We went ahead, what is what the poultry could take. Let's see whether the rabbit could even take it more, much more better. And so we use exogenous enzyme as well. And we discover that exogenous enzyme on performance characteristics, blood parameters on rabbit fed high fiber diets was assessed by Adere Mietor 2014. And this was the contribution. High fiber diet supplemented by grand design, precisely, economically replaced the conventional diet at 0.05% level of inclusion without adversely affecting the performance of blood parameters. We looked again at Stephrosia linearis. This is a flowery plant that belongs to the P family. We try to replace it, to replace soybean content, which is a conventional feed ingredient with, the, with Stephrosia linearis. And we looked 
at the effect on performance carcass characteristics, nutrient digestibility, and blood component of rabbits. I don't remember 2014. The dietary treatment had no effect on the white blood cell, albumin, and total protein. Minor variation, however, among the hematological parameters of the rabbit on the experimental diet were observed. And this may be because of anti-nutritional factor in Teflosia, and that is rotenol. It's actually a content of pesticide or insecticide. Adding value to Teflosia seed by boiling and annexing such into livestock production as feeding ingredients will solve the problem of food scarcity as well as environmental pollution. Quite a number of people will say, if maize is not available, why don't we go for sorghum? Sorghum has a problem, and that is why you see farmers running away from using sorghum, and that is the tiny content. So we try to see how we can replace maize with malted or malted sorghum on the performance of winner rabbits. This was done by Aderemi and Akebi 2010. The assessment of the carcass characteristics indicated similar carcass weight, dressing percentage for all the dietary treatments, final life weight, kidney weight, and the like. The next figure shows the comparison, and you can see they are very close. They got to market weight at about six months. My main contribution. In summary, the trust of my research is in adding value to agro-industrial waste or byproducts and annexing such into productive channel as feed ingredients for monogastry. I have been able to relate the nutritional value of some of these agro-industrial byproducts with their relative monetary value for economic justification of use. I have been able to establish optimum inclusion, inclusion level for optimum performance by animals and benefits to farmers assess long-term feeding of this byproduct meal on broilers and egg-laying chicken, and provide comparative cost analysis of the dietary treatments with the aim of recommending results based on economic productivity. <laughs> Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, I've been able to sensitize rural people towards poultry production this was a means of encouraging entrepreneurial skills and acquisition in both young and old. My research is environmental friendly, as annexing this waste into productive channel help eradicate pollution that the waste will have constituted. This also solves the problem of competition for food between man and animal, thus promoting food security. In closing, my research has improved animal productivity and thus decreased the cost of animal product to consumers, increased food safety and food security, decreased environmental impact of livestock and poultry production, and addressed public concern about animal welfare. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we when I say we, I mean you and I, including the government, all have a role to play in promoting sustainable animal protein in this country. There is a Yoruba adage that says, We can keep few chickens at our backyard promote, to promote animal protein. Can we please move on? Yeah. If you don't have that at your backyard, you are not entitled to have a sumptuous meal of animal protein on your table. In closing, why the government should formulate policies? Oh, let me try and interpret. I'm sorry for those who don't understand Yoruba. If you don't hurt your hand in doing you are not entitled to have a sumptuous animal protein on your table, like the picture we have just seen. In closing, why the government should formulate policies that will assist producers to accelerate production at costs that consumes, consumers can afford. This includes, among others, breeding to improve indigenous stock, 
provision of veterinary services to alleviate animal health problems, provision of financial facilities for animal farmers. I want to say, all these achievements were made possible through the help of God and a scholarship I won in 2011, the prestigious postdoctoral fellowship of African Women in Agricultural Science and Development Award. Also a travel grant sponsored by Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to attend Animal Science Conference in Phoenix, Arizona, United States of America. Another travel grant sponsored by Claude Danforth Plant Science Center to attend Global Cassava Conference at Kampala, Uganda in 2012. Finally, this great institution for serving as a good home front. Acknowledgement. <clears throat> Let me start by thanking the Lord God Almighty, the pillar that holds my life. Without him, today would have been impossible. Mr. Vice Chancellor, I want to thank you for allowing yourself to be used as a vessel to uplift me to this exalted position of chair. I appreciate the chairman and all members of governing council of this God-owned institution for stamping the lifting. I appreciate my spiritual leaders, right from Daddy Ie Adeboye, and all who have nurtured me spiritually, all pastors in charge of all of your provinces, their assistants and spouses, my current pastor in charge of all your province too, Pastor Professor Ayuarije. All national elders, church growth officers, all zona pastors, area pastors, parish pastors, and all ministers and workers in Redeemed Christian Church of God. I cannot but mention Pastor C. T. Oni, whose prophecy of many years finally came to pass. At this juncture, I appreciate all my spiritual children from Dominion Sanctuary, King Sanctuary, Hallelujah Palace, and Rehoboth, all of Redeemed Christian Church of God. I equally appreciate and want to thank my alma mater, Yejide Girls Grammar School, Molete Ibadan, where my agricultural journey started from. The solid foundation I had from Yejide made my journey to College of Education in Laurenbun, the then Bender State University, now Delta, the premier university, University of Ibadan, a smooth one. I appreciate my Oga wonderful supervisor, Professor Olumide Odele Etewe of Blessed Memory for the training and the inspiration he put me through. In fact, he made me learn, among other things, driving of cars. I appreciate Mrs. Abimbola Tewe, who never treated us as pests anytime we visited their home to see our Oga, especially our 8 o'clock routine almost on a daily basis. I appreciate all my other teachers at University of Ibadan, the Department of Animal Science, all my colleagues, both senior and junior. I want to equally appreciate my late parents, Mr. Deleke S. Abolariwa, Mrs. Abigail Abolajoko Ibiemi Abolariwa, for the unflinching love shown in their lifetime. I cannot but mention the, God, the vessel God used in bringing me up in a way, though tough, there, but it has helped me to face and overcome life challenges with ease. That is Mrs. Oluremi Aduke Atie. My appreciation goes to my siblings and their wives, Oluyinka and Olawumi Abolaniwa. My mentor and role model, Mr. Lucia Gumakos and Adiola Abolaniwa. I appreciate all my nieces, nephews, and cousins. The Lord bless you all. I sincerely want to thank my Bowen family. You are all wonderful. From the provost down to the very youngest, youngest person. Professor Akiniyi John Akonde, Omole Yadeniyi Oluwa Femi of Blessed Memory. Dr. Olu Olun Lade Lawa, Ayetoro Olutayo Esan Ayondiji, Alabi Ajiboye, Oguntunji, Fawa Emi Makinde, Ajayi Afolabi Ogunbile, Ayola Ogunbode, Olude Emi Bolaji, Mrs. Ibitoye Tani Mola Oladejo, Grace Afolabi, Yetunde Olawuye, Ogumola, Awogbade, Odekunle, and Femi Omilani. I cannot but appreciate all the technologists and secretaries in the College of Agricultural Engineering and Sciences. 
to all my students, past and present, both undergraduate and postgraduates, I appreciate you all. To my sisters from another parent, Bukola Olaoye of blessed memory, Titila Yoshangoyomi, Dukwe Adebo, and Bolanle Otegbayo, the Lord will shower his blessing the more on you and all yours, in Jesus' name. I'm deeply indebted to my darling husband, Bawafade Adebu Kola Akufe, who has always been there as a support through thick and thin. God bless you, sir. To all my children and their spouse, Tawagbade, Adeneun, Oluasheyi, Adepo Jute, Mitokbe, Shego, Bukumi, and Joel, the Lord will cause you all to fulfill your destiny in Jesus' name. Amen. To my granddaughter, Tamilore, Adebosola, Ajoke, Oluasheji, you will increase on all sides. To all my in-laws, usually, I call them my extended family members. The Adere means they are well represented. Familusis, Omodunbis, Shonugas, Oluwashujis, Adere Olas, and Ayodeles, I love you all. Finally, my co-sisters, the Adere Miroya wives, I appreciate you all. Mr. Vice Chancellor, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, my award experience, that was me there present, making a presentation at role modeling. Myself and Professor Adewumi, that's my mentor, the one at the center, that's the cross section of the farmers that we had to tutor. And myself and my mentee, Mrs. Sibitoye. Then, to the extreme, we have the former vice chancellor, myself, and another award mentor. The journey started, the next slide. This is where the journey as animal scientists started from, Yejide Girls Grammar School, all to the glory of God. Thank you very much for listening. A practice in bowing, yeah? When a lecture is delivered like this, we present the lecturer with a plaque to commemorate the day. And this will be done by the chairman of the occasion, Professor J.A.A. A. Ayoade. He will present the inaugural lecturer with a plaque. Bye -bye. Professor Adiremi, because you have performed so excellently, and I judge that by the number of times that people clapped for you, and it was well, well above average. Uh, the university, Bowen University, Iwo in Osho State, is pleased to present you with this plaque for a successful performance at the presentation of your inaugural lecture. Congratulations. to a close, I don't think there's any need again to recognize anybody as such, 
because the lecturer had mentioned most everybody to be recognized today, either in acknowledging them or in one way or the other. But I join her to welcome you to Bowen University, uh, where godliness and excellence is our core value. You're welcome. I would but introduce just two people. As I saw them before we begin the program. They were both colleagues in the College of Agri before they uh, looked elsewhere. Professor Kindy from University of Osho, Osho State University. They are together in the Faculty of Agri here before. And Dr. Ajiboye is now at the University of Ibadan. So we welcome you and we appreciate your coming. To bring the program to an end, I will invite Dr. Babatunde Olunlade for the closing prayer. Let us pray. And so our Father and our God, we appreciate you. We thank you for this lecture. We thank you for the lecturer. We thank you for Bowen University. We thank you for our guests. You brought everybody here safely. And we pray in the name of Jesus as we are going back to our different locations. Father, guide us in Jesus' name. And the uh, academic advancement of the lecturer herself Father, in the name of Jesus, let it continue with greater success. In Jesus' name we pray. Before we sing the national anthem, uh, the inaugural lecture, we want all members of staff that are here, present, to please remain seated while the reception takes place. They will be entertained in this all courtesy of the academies. So please, even if you step out, step in again and to do this. All Senate members, you will proceed uh, to the University Library, Timothy Olagbenro Library, along with the guest lecturer to Timothy Olagbenro Library immediately after this program. Thank you. We sing the heart. Bowen Anthem first.
recession will take place in the reverse order. And as the recession takes place, please remain standing. Thank you. Thank you.